Hi guys, I thought I would film in front of this Christmas tree today, which is what I did last year when I did my Christmas book haul. I'm actually filming this just before Christmas, but I don't think I'm going to be receiving any books on Christmas Day itself, apart from one book that Mr M says he has bought for me. So I'll include that one in my January book haul. But the other books that I've received this year are from my friends, and we've already done gift exchange, so I thought that I would show you them and film this, and they can go up just after Christmas. So first up, a lot of booktubers did Secret Santa, and I ended up buying for the lovely Alicia over at Ex Libris, whose channel I'll link down below, and Vanessa over at Chabotsky ended up buying for me, and I'll link her channel down below. And the book that she bought me was this, which is Madness by Roald Dahl, Tales of Fear and Unreason. Now, um, Penguin reissued a lot of Roald Dahl short story collections this year, there are four of them, and they all look like this. Very, very creepy indeed. Now, I have read a couple of Roald Dahl short stories before, I think from his collection Kiss Kiss, but it was a very long time ago, and I remember being very unsettled by them, and I loved Roald Dahl as a kid, and I know that his adult stuff is really disturbing, which thrills me, and I'm very much looking forward to reading this. Thank you, Vanessa. All of these books were gifts from booktubers, actually, so I'll link all of their channels down below. Next up is this non-fiction book here, which is Girls Will Be Girls by Ema O'Toole. I have heard nothing but rave reviews about this book, from Jean, from Mercedes, from Lauren. Everyone seems to love it, and I'm really excited to read it. It is a book about gender and gender constructs, um, and that's right up my street. So I'm excited about this one. Lovely Lauren from Reads and Daydreams decided to try and rectify a big hole in my reading, and that is that I have never read Sarah Waters before. I do have Tipping the Velvet sitting on my shelf, but for some reason I've never picked it up, and I mean, it's lesbian historical fiction. I don't know why I haven't read Sarah Waters yet. Everyone who has read her loves her. So that's very silly of me. So she bought me this, which is The Night Watch, and this is about four Londoners called Kay, Helen, Viv, and Duncan, and set during wartime London in the 1940s. Lots of blackouts, lots of sexual adventure, it says on the back, and I think that this one might be a good one to curl up with during the winter months. Next up, the lovely Mercedes bought me three books, and I know that Mercedes and I love buying books for each other. I'm not really sure why, because we don't love exactly the same type of things, but I think we both enjoy the challenge of trying to find things that the other person hasn't read or that they might enjoy, um, because we do love particular things and are united in that love, but then are polarised in other areas of literature as well, so it's quite fun. And she's managed to buy me three books, only one of which I have heard of before, none of which I own, and she's done an excellent job. Thank you very much, Mercedes. The first one is this one here, which is The Merman by Carl Johan Valgren, and this is the one that I had heard of before, and it's translated from the Swedish by... Ellen Flynn. Now it says on the back, Nella and Robert live with their neglectful parents in a small town on the coast. Unable to protect her brother from a daily gauntlet of abuse at school, Nella can only tell him stories of a more hopeful future. Then one day, an extraordinary encounter changes their lives forever. I mean, it's about the sea and it's, it's Merman, so it's for me, isn't it? Yes, it is. Next up is a book on folklore, which I'm really excited about, and it's this one here, which is The Little Book of Hidden People, 20 Stories of Elves from Icelandic Folklore, which again has my name written all over it. And the last one she sent me was this one here, which has a beautiful cover, and it's called Touch by Alexi Zentner. Now this one says, on the eve of her mother's funeral, Stephen, a middle-aged priest, sits down to write her eulogy. But as the evening creeps into night, he is haunted by memories from his childhood, birthday trips to the cuts with his father, the moment his sister slipped under the thick winter ice forever, and the memorable day his grandfather, Gino, came home after a 30-year absence with a bundle of bones in his pocket and a mission to raise the dead. Again, this sounds brilliant. Thank you, Mercedes. You did a very, very, very good job. Simon over at Savage Reads sent me three books, and I opened these, and I'd forgotten he'd actually already told me what he was going to buy for me because he wanted to check I didn't have them already, but clearly my memory is terrible. And he bought me these, which are fairy tales, and they're by um, Sarah Pinborough. Now, I have her book The Death House, and it's been sitting on my shelf for a while, and I haven't read them. And I hadn't heard of these before. It's a trilogy called Poison, Charm, and Beauty. Um, I'm a bit nervous by the subtitle, where each one says, like, a wicked, delicious, sexy, Snow White fairy tale, but 
I trust Simon, so I'm trusting that these are going to be really interesting. I'm hoping that these are going to be deliciously wicked and dark because that is how I like my fairy tale retellings. So Poison is a retelling of Snow White, we've got Charm which is a retelling of Cinderella and we have Beauty which is a retelling of Sleeping Beauty. So thank you very much Simon, I look forward to diving into these. I'll link all of these books in the description box down below if you guys are interested. And finally, before I disappear, I just wanted to quickly show you these books here, which I forgot to include in my December book haul. You can consider them an early Christmas present to myself. I bought one of Mercedes Moth boxes, um, her new subscription box that she set up. Um, so if you have bought one of these and you haven't received the books yet and you want it to be a surprise, then thank you very much for watching this video and I'll see you very soon and lots of bookish love and, and goodbye. If not, and you don't mind knowing what's inside, then keep watching. I'll link Mercedes channel down below as well as the Mothbox website. So this arrived like this and in it, she's got two books inside that are um, from independent presses. I actually already know what these are because she told me while she was sorting out the box, but I've actually forgotten what the second one is. I remember what the first one is, the one that's from Salt, but I've forgotten the one that is by, um, freight books. So that's a surprise for me because as I said my memory is apparently terrible these days. I used to have such good memory, my memory now not so much. Anyway, it comes with this little card in here which says Moth Box and on the back it says both of the books in this box are quiet yet powerful stories about grief, guilt and love. They made my heart ache for the people I've never known and for the places I've never been. I hope they give you the same mixture of sadness and joy, which I think is rather nice. Okay. Oh, they're wrapped so beautifully, look. Ooh, look, look, look. So cute. And I know how long it took Mercedes to wrap all of these. A long time, a long time. Okay, I think this is the one that I actually remember. So it's by, hang on, Russell, Russell. Yes, it's published by Salt and it's by Sue Gee and it's called Trio. It's also set in the northeast of England, which is where I'm from, which is very exciting. So it says Northumberland, the winter of 1937. In a remote moorland cottage, Stephen Coulter, a young history teacher, is filled with sadness and longing at the death of his wife. Through a charismatic colleague, Frank Embleton, and Frank's sister Diana, he is drawn into the beguiling world of a group of musicians and falls gradually under their spell. But as war approaches, a decision is made which calls all their lives quite shockingly into question. I'll only read the first paragraph of the blurb because sometimes I think blurbs give too much away. So on to the next one. Here's the next one. Again, beautifully packaged. And this is the one that's published by Freight Books that I've completely forgotten about. So it's exciting for both of us is this one here, which is Call of the Undertow by Linda Cracknell. And I think the reason that I didn't remember this but remember that one is because I had actually heard of the salt one before, but I haven't heard of this one before, so consequently, completely forgot it. It says, cartographer, ooh, I do love maps. Cartographer Maggie Tem has left her modern urban life in Oxford and retreated to a, mo a remote village at Scotland's most northern and storm-battered edge. Mercedes, this doesn't sound like your kind of book at all. <laughs> it is clear she is running from something, hoping to forget and be forgotten. But to the villagers, the question remains, what is she hiding from? So there we go. Those are all the things that I wanted to show you guys today. I hope that if you celebrate Christmas, you had a lovely Christmas. Let me know in the comment section down below if you have received any books or perhaps you've received some vouchers that you would like to buy books with or perhaps you were just gonna buy yourself books anyway because there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I hope you guys are having a lovely week and I'll speak to you very soon. Lots of bookish love.